Joshua, and uh, this is my laboratory, if you will. I'm what's called a biomedical engineer. I work on medical equipment. Um, the company I work for is actually a air ambulance company, so we'll fly to a scenes, what they call scene runs, and we'll pick up patients from various EMS agencies and fly them to the nearest hospital. We'll also do uh, inner hospitals, which basically is transporting patient from hospital to hospital, a unstable patient. Um, and I work on all of the equipment that goes into these helicopters, like ventilators, pacemakers, defibrillators, suction pumps, oxygen regulators, just stuff like that. So this is my job and I love it. So uh, starting off really basic, um, I do a lot of various pieces of equipment such as um, we're going to go very basic to, in my opinion, more advanced stuff to work on. Now, when it comes to using, it's a completely different ballgame. So, stuff that is very simple to work on. The first thing our, our well, is our Welch Allen uh, Shirt Temp Plus. You see these, oh, I see these a lot in various um, pre hospital settings or just doctor's offices. I mean, it's very portable, very easy to use, and it's, it's actually a pretty good unit. I mean, the whole, the whole thing is plastic, but there's really not much to it. And there's a single switch in there that will actually know that you're putting a temp in or pulling one out, and it actually will know on the various ones um, which one is a rectal probe and which one's an oral probe. So this one is actually an oral probe. The red ones are um, rectals, if I remember correctly. So, very easy to work on, not much to it. Uh, take three AA batteries, and that's really that. Not much to that one. Um, the next thing that actually I enjoy working on are our suction pumps. Now, we have three different kinds of suction pumps. We have the, this is the Escort Junior Quick Draw. We also have an Escort and it's not E-S-C-O-R-T, it's S-S-C-O-R-T. Um, we also have Total Back, T-O-T-E, capital L, V-A-C. Those are, I think they're black units, but this is one of the more easier ones to use. Um, your vomitous secretions will actually go into this piece right here, which is very easy to push in and pull out. So just snaps in like that. Your tubing, suction tubing goes on right there along with your catheter. That will go there also. Um, there's a single battery 12 volt NICAD in the back. Lead acid in the back. And there's a single circuit board in here with a single push button. So it's actually very easy to use, very fun to use. So that's that one. And we're going to start going more complex. So next I have our um, infusion pumps. These are made by Alaris. Uh, this is the 2660, 2860, sorry. Um, there's a couple of different models. They're pretty much all the same. The tri-chambers, three chambers down here, various um, drugs you can put in whatever. Um, we do have a drug log catalog in here for them to choose like levofed or nor norepinephrine and just various things like that so they can actually keep track of which ones they use. Now this one actually is technically out of service because all three of these are, well, it says service on all of them so they could be a broken um, unit itself or it could just be locked up, which is usually the case, so, but that one's kind of fun to work on, a little bit tedious, they break those frequently, the whole thing is plastic, um, this clamp right here will actually clamp on, in the MICU, it will actually clamp on various parts that they want, it can clamp on the top of the railing, it clamp on the side railing, it clip on the patient railing, there's a lot of different places they can clamp it, but we have, these are separate than what we have in the helicopter. The helicopter gets 
um, a slightly different configuration. It uses the same metal bar right here, but this piece right here, this black piece, is actually converted into something that will actually hold onto a rail, which I'll show you a little bit later. Um, these don't really break that frequently, these handles. Um, the only thing that does every once in a while is these will not retract anymore. They become frozen. So we'll have to lubricate them up if they can be. Go from there. Batteries are changed once every three years for the internal, and the memory gets you know, battery internal battery gets changed every year. Internal memory is every three years. Okay, transcutaneous pacemakers. So we have three different, uh, sorry, two different models of pacemakers, both in Medtronic. We have the 5348 and 5391. Yeah, and um, they use these seldom. You can also do pacing on a defibrillator unit, uh, but this is more for a fine-tuned pacing. Um, but these are, I don't really care for working on these. They're very complicated, I thought. I still think they're kind of complicated. Um, the checkout test isn't the world's most easiest thing to understand. Um, a lot of oscilloscope using I never really used an oscilloscope that much, and it really, really took a toll <laughs> on me trying with tech support and reading and reading and reading and just trying to figure it out. So eventually it got down to it that I finally figured it out. But um, our older one, we're having a, there was a recall, not really a recall, a notice that was sent out on the older one in which the BPM, the rate, at which the heart beats um, on this will actually cause well, oxidation on one of the parts will actually cause the rate to increase to I think the maximum so yeah 180 so that is more than enough to kill the person so um, there have been I think four deaths due to that rate increase so there's been a a watch, I guess, if you will. You're supposed to pay attention to your patient anyways, but there's you're supposed to pay more attention to that. But anyways, the older ones are a little bit more easy to understand, in my opinion. I mean, you have your sensitivity, you have your um, output, and your rate all in one. And it's just, it's, it's very simple to use, very simple to play with. And this one needs to be PM. Nope, no, it doesn't. Okay, so the two more complicated units, I guess, are the actual pilot's helmet, um, their ventilator, and our defibrillator multi-parameter monitor also. I think those are the little bit more complicated ones. I enjoy doing them, but they're a little more complicated. So, first up is our ventilator. So, we currently have the LTV by Carefusion LTV 1000 now. Our people next door, children's, they have the LTV 1200. Um, they really enjoy that. Uh, we enjoy ours too. Um, but, well, there's really no negatives to it. I mean, the whole thing, I mean, it's like eight or nine pounds. And the whole thing, I don't think there's any plastic on this. So it's all metal. There's rubber piecing up here. I mean, literally, the whole thing is metal. Besides, the only one thing I notice a lot is this fan grill right here is plastic. And sometimes they'll knock it on like an O2 regulator and it'll smash in and the fan will get stuck and that will cause a failure. Um, besides that, there's really this other piece right here. This is the pigtail that the power in. Um, this will, that will get worn off um, or worn down, the little snapping mechanism where the, the plug locks into it. And sometimes, um, if a patient, or not a patient, if a crew member doesn't see that this part, sometimes it gets frayed due to overuse or overstressing the, um, the unit. It will actually, depending on what wires, I don't remember the configuration, if they cross, like there's four different wires in there, black, red, and green and white, I think it is. If they cross certain one of those, it'll start to heat up. 
and the heating up process will actually melt the connector together with the power in. And you have to replace both of them, this one as well as the power in so from the or power out from the uh, unit itself, from the AC adapter. So it's a good unit. It's a very productive piece. Uh, we don't really put that many hours on it. Um, the internal battery is right back here. Uh, there's two PMs, two different kinds of PMs on it. There's a 10K PM, which is done every two years, and there's a 30K PM done every six years. So it's 10-year PM, 10-year PM, 30-year, or 30K PM. Did I say 10 year? 10 kpm, 10 kpm, 30 kpm. So two years, two years, six years. Two years, two years, six years. So, yeah, it's a very good unit. I enjoy it. So, last but not least, is our defibrillator unit. Um, it's a very good. It's a very good piece. Sorry. Um, huh, got a woman in labor. All right. So this is our defibrillator unit. I also I like to call it defibrillator unit. Um, technically, it's a multi-parameter monitor. Um, it does various things. It does ECG, SpO2, NIBP, CO2. IBP and defibrillation is, and pacemaking, so it does anything you could possibly want, literally. Uh, it's, it's a very, very good unit. When I first came on to this company, uh, they told me this, these things just were junk. I mean, they're just absolutely awful. And I found out why they thought they were junk. I mean, I've been watch I saw people drop them on the tarmac out here. I mean, just dropping out from the back of the ambulance. Like, no wonder it breaks. So the most common pieces I see broken are this this top hook right here. This it's actually <laughs> it's about thirty-eight dollars, but I've replaced probably thirty, forty of them. So uh, it's the whole thing is plastic. The only thing metal is the NIDP plug and this thing in the back. Now this thing in the back is actually what we use to connect it to the uh, helicopter. So there's a couple of locking mechanisms right here and this is the other thing that's really kind of counterproductive is these these um, lift levers are plastic so they will constantly break but what we like to do with them is on the MICUs or mobile intensive care units this is the actual stand that will go in the MICU so the defibrillator will sit on top of there just like that goes in just like that and these locking mechanisms will just lock it in there and they'll frequently break because they put too much pressure on it or it doesn't sit all the way in and they'll try and force it and it'll break it off but this piece this piece right here is the only thing that actually goes into the helicopter this little unit right here and none of this other stuff does so oh one more thing. Almost forgot. It. We got our pilot's helmet here. Uh, not only pilots, but crew members, medic and nurse, pilot, nurse helmet. Um, so this is the MSA Galet. It's a very good helmet. Um, it's the top part. This is all made of Kevlar. Um, it's. I've only had to destroy. I think two of them. And let me tell you, if you've ever tried to destroy a Kevlar with a hammer, it's nearly impossible. Um, but it is a very decent helmet. I mean, they fit nice. Putting on them if you have the right configuration in. And just have a couple visors. There's really not much to this. So it's a fun helmet to play with. The one common thing I see break common thing I see break is um, the chin strap right here. This will frequently just snap off due to overuse. I mean, it's, it's just a snap in, so eventually it will wear down. I'll have to replace that. Um, the mic plug right here, this this end right here gets stressed, so um, I have plugs for that. I've, yet, I've never actually had to replace one. We've always just replaced the whole bloody thing. 
Um, but I yeah, have these quartz, these uh, NATO plugs. They're like 12 bucks a piece, but I have those. And so that's that. So really the main purpose of this whole this whole thing is for me to be able to teach other people whoever watches this how to actually use this equipment and how to do stuff that I found little tricks tips and tricks on how to do all this stuff and it's really not that complicated um, I've I watched a lot of videos I watched a lot of things on how not to make a video so I want to kind of do the opposite of what they did. So I'm going to try and help people out. I, I love helping people out. I love helping people in general. I mean, I'm, hell, I love being a medic. So I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and it's not all just about the book. You also have to understand, I like to understand the concept of how things work, um, how this relates to a patient, what this means on a patient. So every once in a while, I'll give a little tidbit of information or a little a little something more, so, but yeah, so, you'll be seeing me around a lot, there's a lot of pieces of equipment, and I'm going to try and do, when certain things break, I'm going to show, just do different segments on how to, how to replace it, even if it's something simple, replacing the handle on that thing, so, if it's something simple, I'll just, I'll still make a video of it, just to make it a little bit easier, so, cool beans, see y'all around.